good. Thank you very much. I, this is a message, and I appreciate those that listen online. I do appreciate you very much, and I hope that you'll stay with us. But I want to speak directly to our people tonight. And take your Bible and go back to Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. The Bible says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. So he knew that the writing was signed. By the way, he knew what the writing was going to be. No doubt it was noised about the city. The Bible says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before uh, his God. Now watch this, as he did a fourth time. So no doubt those windows had been open often. No doubt this was something that he practiced often. He was not going to change uh, just because there was a decree that was passed uh, that was going to perhaps put he in danger or his life in danger. I'll make some statements tonight, if I may. I was not uh, like Curtis Hudson. Curtis Hudson said, Baptist born and Baptist bred, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. I, I'm, I, I wasn't that way. I'm not that way. I was Catholic born. I was Catholic bred all the way up to age 18. But I can promise you one thing, when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. Amen. I am Baptist, I'm going to state a little bit more uh, definitively, I am fundamental independent Baptist by conviction, not by convenience. Uh, I, I don't think it's quite fair that some people judge fundamental Baptists all as one. It's not fair. I don't think it's fair that you judge all Walmarts at, as one. You go in and you have a person working at the register there and they check you out and they don't treat you decent, that doesn't mean you're going to get that at the next Walmart. Right, uh, right. You have somebody that's there that's a manager of one Walmart, they might not run it like the manager of another Walmart. You don't get mad at Walmarts across the nation because you have uh, one or two Walmarts that are not doing what they're supposed to do. I think it's very unwise for people to make statements about fundamental Baptists in general and put us all into a box and say this is what they are. I think that's a little bit unfair and very unwise, you know, because not all of us are the same. We're all different. And may I say this, that every pastor's different. Every pastor's different. I've met independent Baptist churches and pastors that are, that are as different as they come. I mean, I've met some that are camp meeting preachers, and when they preach, they, they huff a lot. I've met them. They're good men. I, I don't huff a lot when I preach. I, I met pastors that are just pointed. And man, they just kind of let you have it straight. I'm talking about gun barrel straight and right up your nose. I, I met others that are good pastors, and they teach. Uh, they're preachers, don't get me wrong, but the element of the style of their preaching uh, would be like teaching. I, I heard that Dr. John O. Rice on CD, uh, now that it's on CD, no doubt it was on cassette many years ago, and I never heard him raise his voice one time. I've seen uh, pastors that preach, and they walk around all over the place. Matter of fact, I think they try and step in every place they can. I've met independent Baptist preachers that don't, don't leave the platform. They don't leave behind the pulpit. Uh, I, I think they're all different. And I think you uh, ought to give grace to whom grace is due. Uh, by the way, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den uh, simply because he was unwilling to change. Uh, can I say this, that habits are extremely important. Uh, habits, if you will, please, can be rooted in that which is uh, good and uh, also bad character. Uh, bad habits need to be changed. Good habits don't need to be changed. Now, when you get tempted to change your habits that are good into bad habits, that's not a wise decision. When you are, if you would please, uh, inspired to be able to take your bad habits and turn them into good habits, and that's a good thing. 
So let me speak to you for just a few minutes on don't change, don't change. Uh, here's some things that we ought to consider. Don't change your good habits due to the customs of the population. Don't change your good, you know our population and their habits, if you will please, or their customs is always changing. I remember in the 1970s when there was the Jesus freaks. How many of you remember that many years ago? You know, they would go out and uh, uh, they would be on the beaches and they'd have their bell bottoms on and their long hair and their flowery shirts and stuff like that. And, and uh, uh, many of them was, you know, doing marijuana and stuff like that, but they identified in, uh, with uh, Jesus in their own way. Well, I don't think that was a good thing. Right. Now, may I say this, uh, don't change your good habits due to the customs of the population. Uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 the Bible says and be not conformed to this world But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God All right, so God says this he says don't be conformed to this world But he tells us to be transformed then he tells us where that should begin that should begin inside of the mind Now by the way the world's customs are always going to be changing the world's customs, you, you saw uh, in, in our generation now that uh, a lot of uh, churches are, are bringing in, uh, uh, you know, rock and roll type of groups and all sorts of other stuff. And what are they trying to do? They're trying to conform to that which is the world. That ought not to be named once among us. Uh, can I say this, that uh, what you ought to do, instead of saying, well, you know, there's many Christians that do it. Here's what you ought to judge it by. What does the best Christian do? What does the best Christian do? The best Christian that you know, what are they practicing? The best Christian that you know, what are they adhering to? Uh, not just what is everybody else doing, but what is the best of the best doing? I mean, if you're going to set yourself a goal to become something, then set your goal to be high, not moderate, Amen. not low. I, I'm saying this, uh, don't, don't change your good habits due to the customs of the population. Uh, statement number one. Statement number two, don't change your good habits due to the uh, commands of the politicians. You know, the politicians today, our political field has changed more radically than it's ever been before. Oh, I remember years ago when somebody would push socialism that they would get in trouble. Uh, I remember people that used to push communism years ago in our history and they get locked up. Now today you have people that's in the political arena and they're pushing socialism and they're pushing communism and they're becoming heroes. They're becoming a voice of a select group of people. And by the way, isn't it amazing to you that uh, you can have four atheists that's in a city, a city that might be 90% Christian, and the four atheists raise a fit about a cross being in the middle of the city, and the board, if you would please, uh, those that are part of the council or those that are the city fathers will become shaking fear, and all of a sudden they take down the cross because of four. My question is, where's all the Christians? My question is, how come nobody's speaking up for that which is right? Yeah. I'm saying this. I'm saying don't change your uh, good habits due to the commands of the political arena. Uh, Daniel chapter 3 and verse 4 of the Bible says, uh, then it says, uh, it says, uh, and uh, Herod cried aloud. Or, uh, that which is, uh, it was hurled aloud it was made boisterous it was out there people could hear uh, how it was being said the bible says to you it is commanded it says O oh, people nations it says in languages that uh, at the sound uh, he's talking about the sound of all the musical instruments that's named there he says then you're going to fall down then you're going to worship the golden image that nebuchadnezzar the king has set up and in verse six the bible says and whosoever falleth not down and worship it at the same hour or be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace all right so here we understand that uh, uh, there are those if you will uh, that was uh, warned if you will that if they don't do this then of course it's going to be uh, that which is the end of their life uh, they were going to be the ones that was going to be taken into captivity and cast into the burning fire. And I also remind you that when those three Hebrew boys was cast into the burning fiery furnace, that uh, as they went in, uh, they saw that there was another one there. And the Bible says, like it unto the Son of God. So the Son of God will be with you through all of your fires. 
through all of your problems. Now, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I hear stuff uh, over and over again in the political arena uh, that really bothers me as a Christian, more so even as a pastor, because I think it's confusing the minds of our young people. By the way, listen to me. Uh, even though evolution is pushed by the secular educationalist that's in the public school, it's still wrong. Uh, even though if you would please uh, uh, they're taking prayer and have taken prayer and Bible uh, out of the public school Christians still ought to pray in the public school and Christians still ought to carry their Bible in the public school and by the way I'm not preaching something that's foreign this is what preachers have always preached it's not us that has changed it's the political arena that's pushing things and it's the uh, those if you will that's in the the populational field that's uh, trying to change the customs uh, oh come on now uh, years ago it would be a shame for a man to enter into a woman's restroom Amen. it would be a shame for a woman to enter into a man's ba uh, bathroom it'd be a shame Years ago, when you saw somebody that acted like a homosexual, uh, we, we honestly, we, we looked at that as that's just downright wrong. Amen. But now you have people that's embracing it. Now, I'm telling you, God hadn't changed. What has changed is the society in which we live in. And by the way, uh, I travel the nations, and here's what I'm hearing among the nations as they look at America. Uh, they thank God for our economy, but they have pity on our stupidity. They look at us and say, how in the world did you ever go that way? Right. And I'm in these nations around the world, and they're looking at us, and they're laughing at us, and they're saying, how come uh, your Christian nation is not standing like Christians and being Christ-like? And can I tell you, it's high time that Christians stand up and be Christ-like and do what you're supposed to do, and it does not matter what the population does and the changing of their customs, and it does not matter what is in the political arena. God still expects a Christian to act and to walk and to talk and to be that Christian that they ought to be and hold the testimony high. I'm saying this. I'm saying don't change. Don't change your good habits due to the customs of the population. Uh, don't change your good habits due to the commands of that which is the political arena. Statement number next. Don't change your good habits due to the criticism of people. You're always going to have the critics. Let me help you with a critic. Don't come down and play with them in the kindergarten. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Now, can I help you out a little bit? You're going to waste a lot of time. You go soul winning. You help people. You love people. If you're a preacher, you preach the Bible. You train your people to go the right direction. You show them what is right as commanded by God for you as the pastor of that church. And as the pastor of this church, I have a mandate from God to try and lead our people as the shepherd of our people. And so from time to time, I'm going to say, don't do that. Don't do that. Beware of this. Now, by the way, that's what a good shepherd does. Now, wait a minute. Watch this, if you will. Uh, so when criticism comes from people, can I help you out a little bit? One of the best things that you could ever do is just ignore it and keep going forward. Don't forget Nehemiah stayed on the wall. There was Tobiah and Sam Ballot that tried to get him to come down off the wall, and he said, I can't, he, I can't leave the work. I can't do that. So you keep doing what you're supposed to do as a believer. Luke chapter 10, verse 38, the Bible says, and it came to pass that they went, uh, that uh, he entered into the certain village there, and a certain woman by the name of Martha received him into her house. Luke chapter 10, verse 39. The Bible says, and she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at the, Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about, the Bible says, uh, with uh, much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? A bid her, therefore, to come and help me. Now, may I tell you, uh, you don't always have the opportunity to be able to meet with the Lord. And so uh, there was an opportunity, if you will, for Martha to be able to come and to be able to sit and learn at Jesus' feet. And, and church is that way. Did you know that? 
you don't always have an opportunity to go to church that's why I think if there comes between going to a ball game and going to church you ought to go to church Amen. that's why I think if it comes between working as Martha was doing and uh, coming about with much work uh, a, a choice between that and going to church or meeting with Jesus allowing God to use his son to speak to your heart as he does through the word of God today I'd simply choose church Amen. here's what we understand we understand this we ought not uh, to trade in our good habits due to criticism and I'll be honest with you uh, the more that you rise in trying to serve people the more people is going to shoot at you you bus captains that has been successful you'd be amazed at some of the stuff that uh, has been said you'd be amazed at criticism that comes you Sunday school teachers that have a growing Sunday school class You'd be amazed at what people say. You parents that's trying to raise godly children, you'd be amazed at what people say. Those that get up and sing in the choir, oh, you say, well, preacher, they shouldn't say anything. Oh, they're going to say something. But I'd rather them say something negative about your good than good about your negative. I'd rather you be a little bit too far to the right than dead center or left. Because at least you can lead people the right direction. I'm saying this. I'm saying don't change your good habits due to criticism. You're always going to... I've been in ministry 30, uh, 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 about 34, 35 years in preaching. And can I tell you, there's always been the critics. I had critics when I first started preaching. That's never left me. Now, they just change faces from time to time, but they're always around. Uh, you, you'll never outrun the critics. By the way, if, if you, uh, I asked people this. I said, uh, uh, did you enjoy the Baptist leadership? Oh, yes, I enjoyed the Baptist leadership conference. I said, who was your favorite speaker? And did you know I've only asked about 10 people? And about the 10 people I've asked, none of them has said one. Some like uh, some like Dr. Smith. Some like Dr. Owens, some like Dr. Uh, Ray Young, some like Dr. Jeff Owens, some like Dr. John Hamlin, some like Dr. Dean uh, uh, or Matt Miller, uh, some like the, uh, Brother Alex uh, Ramirez. I mean, uh, of the main speakers that we had in the morning and then the evening time, you know, there's a variation. You know, so, uh, one said, I like it hot. But one told me I said well then who do you think was hot and he named the name another one said boy I like it direct and this is what people told me I said who do you think was so direct he named the name that was different than the one that said that he liked it hot another one said boy I liked it when they told different stories that put it all together I said well, who do you think did the best job on that one they gave me somebody else's name you know God uses different people in different ways don't you thank God that not everybody's like you well I know some of you think that you've arrived but can I tell you we thank God not everybody's like you now can I tell you this look uh, don't don't uh, don't change your good habits due to the criticism of people you know people are gonna criticize you oh can I help you out a little bit <laughs> I love you but don't be a pious parent if somebody criticizes your child, please come off of this thing thinking they're angelic. When I moved here, I said, look, if any of my children do anything wrong, you don't need to come to me. Now, if you, you want to come to me and inform me, that's fine, but you've got my permission, 100%, chew them out. You, you're going to help them. And by the way, I, you said, why would you do something like that? Because I'm not going to go to work with them. One day they're going to have a boss. And I'm not going to go there and say, now you can't talk to my son or you can't talk to my daughter. You got to tell me what they're doing and not turning those hamburgers the right way. <laughs> there comes a time in a life where mom and dad, you got to let your kids grow up a little bit. Amen. Brother Jonathan came to me one day and he said, dad, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? He said, you know, I've got teenagers that come on to youth activities and, and they don't want to participate. I said, that's easy. Tell them don't come. They don't want to participate. Tell them stay home. 
When I was a youth director for 10 years, I said, if you come, you participate. You don't want to participate, get out of here. You go home. We don't need you here. We have plenty of kids who want to participate. I, I, I think sometimes, here's what we're doing. We're raising a bunch of babies. I'm sorry your feelings got hurt. You know, you know what they're going to do? Uh, they're going to get married one day, and the wife's going to pull around just like that. Yeah, come on. <laughs> oh, you say, preacher, I don't, I don't like that, what you're saying. Well, that's why I'm saying it while you're here. <laughs> don't change your good habits due to the customs of the population. Uh, don't change your good habits due to the commands of the politicians. Don't change your good habits because of the criticism of the people. Let me give you one last thing and I'm done. Don't change your good habits due to the changing, if you would please, of prosperity. Don't let prosperity change you. Amen. You know, God is the one that gives us. God is the one that enriches us. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 12, the Bible says, I know both how to be abased and... I knew how to abound. It says, everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. So, you know, I, I know God's been good to us. Our economy is better than it's ever been. I'm hearing statistically it's better than it's been. And some people say 10 years. Some people say as much as 40 years. I don't know. I'm not done the research. But I know it's pretty good. I, I, I know that people are not struggling as much as they used to. I know that people are getting more back on their taxes in some cases. In some cases, they've made more money over the years, so they've had to pay in a little bit more, but it's because they made more. And so, I mean, God's been pretty good to us. But don't let your prosperity go to your head. It is God. It is God. You know, God is the one that enriches us, and God is the one that gives to us. God is the one that enables us. Yeah, I'm sorry, but may I say this? Uh, don't let your Bible knowledge of prosperity go to your head. Amen. Uh, don't be somebody that becomes snooty. Amen. You love people and help people. Amen. Be able to guide people and be able to instruct people, but do it in a way, if you will, as an individual. Let the preacher do the preaching. Amen. Let the preacher do the preaching. You know, let the preacher get up and say the hard stuff. Amen. You don't have to be the hard person. You don't have to preach it straight all the time. You can be that person that is uh, mm, use more people skills because you've got time to weave yourself in. Okay? But uh, let the preacher get up some, from some time, and don't be easily offended. What about that verse where it says, Great peace have the love thy law, and nothing shall offend them? Well, I'll tell you what, I got offended by what the preacher said. Shows me you're not in your Bible very much. Because if you stay in your Bible, you're not going to be easily offended. But here's what we'll do. The Bible says when, uh, when somebody gives you a, even a rebuke, when you rebuke a wise person, they'll love you all the more. When you rebuke a scorner, what do they do? Oh, uh, they begin to harden their neck. They become to be critical. The Bible says they hate you. They hate you. Hello. I, I know how people receive a message by the way that they respond to the message. I, I've done this. I, I preach straightforward messages, and I'll be walking down the hallway. Josh, stand up. I'll be walking down the hallway, and, and there's a person standing facing me, and I'll walk up, and I'll try and shake their hand, and they, they, they snoot me. They're like, well, what is that? Well, that that's what you call a scorer. That's a critical person. You bothered them so much, they don't have the spirituality to be kind. Now, I'm just telling you how it is. I, I'm saying there are some things you ought not to change. Amen. By the way, you ought to be kind to everybody. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen. Uh, Amen? All of a sudden, somebody rubs you the wrong way. You go up and say, man, it's great to see you. Great to see you. By the way, when you were younger and we came to this church, did anybody ever get on to you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, did it help you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, good. You know, uh, uh, what that does is that it takes the pride out of him. Oh, I, I'm just telling you how it is. But if you're, stand up, if you will. If, if all of a sudden, I, I'm helping you as a parent, but all of a sudden, you know, uh, I say something I shouldn't say, and then he comes up and he rebukes me. Go ahead and rebuke me. You're pretty good at it. <laughs> Go ahead and rebuke me. 
can't believe you got on my kid like that. What is your problem? Yeah. You know, and, uh, and then I get, I get all, ooh, that just bothered me so much. You know, God uses different people to help your children. Yeah. They're not always going to be. Are you going to run your own business out of your home? Come on. I mean, they're trying to help your child. You say, well, they don't have a right. Well, if you were doing it right, they wouldn't have to correct them. Might be you're not doing such a hot job, so you need extra help. So God sent somebody your way. But what, what if all of a sudden I'm cocky? I'm copy, cocky to an adult. You're right? I'm cocky. I'm cocky. I don't think you have a right to tell me what to do. I don't think you have a right to put your finger on my chest again. <laughs> You say, well, well, you know, hey. Yeah, hey, I'm saying this. I'm saying, you know, let people help you. Let people help you. Oh, Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for the privilege to be able.